Okay, with that being said, we can move on to the next screen. So here we are. There are five of us in your first year advising hub here um, in the School of Engineering. Um, I'm here and Karen Lewis is here as well to support me today. Um, you will hear from Karen uh, when she comes into the second part of this webinar. So here's our little introduction and what we're going to be talking about during the course of this webinar today. Um, we are gonna look at the major templates for computer and systems engineering and for electrical engineering. Important for you to know for your registration coming up on July the 10th. Uh, we'll talk about how to register and Karen will show you live time screens um, and how to make that happen. We're going to talk about the transfer course process. It's very common for students to transfer courses in um, either from dual enrollment or AP credit, IB credit, et cetera. And then importantly, we need to tell you about the dates, uh, both for RPI coming in as a first year student at RPI and specific to us in the School of Engineering Advisement Hub. So what is this SOE hub? We are professional advisors um, in the School of Engineering. We will advise you for your first two semesters or your first year here at RPI. Um, you will also get faculty advisors coming in on your second year at RPI. Um, some of the majors have secondary advisors in addition to faculty advisors. Um, you are one of those programs, or two of those programs, I should say. ECSE stands for Electrical and Computer Systems Engineering, and you'll hear that term thrown around a lot the whole rest of your time at RPI. You are in the ECSE department. But lucky you, being part of the ECSE department, you have a faculty advisor plus a secondary advisor to help you with all things advising. And where we are, uh, we are in the Johnson Engineering Center. 3306 is our office number. We're located on the third floor. And you can see by the highlighted little map here, when you come in uh, on the DCC or Darren Communications Center side of the JEC, you walk straight down the hallway, you're gonna pass the Dean's office. And then when we get down into this area, you have to walk through um, the Ansel Lounge. That's a really cool spot for our engineers to study, work on projects, do a little bit of group work. And when you go through the lounge, here's us at the RPI First Year Advising Hub. We like to put this screen up. We know that you have chosen to be either an electrical engineer or a computer and systems engineer. Um, it's pretty easy to change majors, especially if you're gonna change to a different type of engineering. We'll also have engineers that will come from being undeclared engineers and they will declare a major in electrical or computer and systems. Um, also, it's very, um, very, very common for students to make changes that include going from an electrical engineer to declaring a dual major in electrical and computer and systems engineering. Or maybe a student starts out, they're all big on the computer science classes. They start with computer science one here at RPI and they're like, this is a lot of computer science. I don't want to be a computer and systems engineer as much as I thought. I'm going to try electrical. So we have all these conversations all year round with our students. So just so you know, you have options just because you applied and declared a major does not mean you're stuck with it in any way, shape or form. There's flexibility. Next, please. So this is First off, before I talk about anything else, we have tons of resources for you through the First Year Advising Hub. This is going to be a whole collection of resources coming your way. So pay attention. Again, this is being recorded, so you can always go and watch it back if need be. And the other thing, all these resources are housed in the School of Engineering Advisement Hub website. I'll talk about that a lot because everything you could possibly need, almost every question that might pop into your brain, you can find an answer on the Hub website. We update it almost daily, so it's very comprehensive. So with that being said, these are some of the resources you'll find. Running in the background, 
there is, oh, sorry, there's a four year plan that you'll become familiar with where you are going to be able to keep track of classes that you're taking at RPI. And you'll also see these PDFs that are kind of hovering out in the front for both computer systems and electrical engineers. This is like your roadmap for how to graduate within four years at RPI. Sorry about the extra wordage, Karen. <laughs> And then this is another resource. This is Quacks. Yep, like the duck. Um, you can use Quacks. This is how you build your schedule. Very, very cool resource. Um, this is not put out through RPI. This was actually created through a computer science club called Arcos. So those computer science students have created a way for you to build your schedule and it keeps track of scheduling times. So you are physically not able to register for a class that's got a conflict with a different class. Um, the big thing that we need to put out here, this is a tool to use to build your schedule, but you absolutely have to go into SIS, log in and register for classes in SIS. Using Quacks will not register you for your classes. Next, please. And then speaking of SIS, once you log into SIS, you're gonna go to student menu um, checking registration status, which is underlined in the red, this is the way that you're able to view your time ticket. Your time ticket is how you register at RPI. It tells you the exact time to register. It might be 8 o'clock on July 10th. It might be 10 o'clock on July 10th. But you need to set all the alarms and make sure that you're available to register at that time so you get the classes that you want. Um, you're also able to view any holds that you may have. As an incoming student, um, this will be the, less, the least amount of holds that you will have or have the ability to have while you're at RPI. Um, everybody is gonna have a hold up until the point that they sign the financial responsibility agreement. That is very easy. It's basically reading through, knowing that you're gonna have to pay back any student loans that you take on, and then hitting enter that you agree to the terms above. It's the easiest hold you'll ever have to remove, but you have to do it every single semester that you are an RPI student. So make sure you can do that. You can even sign into SIS and do it while we're talking today during the course of this webinar. It's just one less thing for you to have to worry about on July the 10th when you go to register for classes. And Karen will talk a little bit more about this as well. I think we can end it there because you're going to go in and show in depth. And again, this is still in SIS. This is how you're going to search up your classes. Um, you will always search by the term that you want. This is not automated. So you have to make sure that you're going in for fall 2024. Make sure nothing else populates there or use the drop down to get it to the right semester. Over here, you're going to be able to look for classes. Um, one of the things that Karen and I will talk about is your Haas inquiry classes, which is a Haas class that is specifically um, set aside for freshmen. When you look in the drop down menu, it's not under inquiry, but rather Haas inquiry. So look under H. There's a couple different things that you're going to look for while you're looking at classes. Right here, it will show you if a class is open or closed. Um, in this case, it says SR, so there are classes still available. If there is a big C here, it's gonna mean that the class is closed and you really need to look for a different class or at least a different section that might be available. The big thing that you wanna look at for seats is the cap, the actual amount of seats that remain um, they're all going to be right here in this vicinity. In some cases, not all cases, not every class, there also might be a wait list in place. And we'll, we have more information on our SOE Hub website about how to enter a wait list as well. All the way over to the right hand side, you have your attributes. Attributes, excuse me. This is very important because it tells you different things about a class that you're looking to register for. Um, communication intensive is one of the requirements for your five Haas classes as an engineer. So you can look and see if a class is communication intensive. It will also tell you here that these are Haas inquiry classes. So if you haven't looked and figured this out yet, sometimes you are able to satisfy two requirements um, with one class. 
So these classes are both communication intensive and Haas inquiry classes. Kill two birds with one stone kind of situation. And then these are clickable. So look for these clickable links when you're looking at your classes. This is a big way for you to be able to find out what prerequisite courses there might be for a class. If you click into this um, area, you're going to be able to learn more about the class. So click on those little highlighted links. Um, you can review any restrictions by clicking into the CRN of a class. When we're talking about CRN, that's your course registration number. Those are very, very important. And they'll be to the far left hand side of a listing of a class. It's a five, five, yes, five digit number. Um, and you're gonna literally manually input those numbers in to register. And Karen will show a little bit more about that. And of course, as always, um, there are steps about how to register for classes in more detail on our website. Last week, we did a, uh, a registration webinar all about the steps for how to register for RPI classes. So you can always watch that back too. Resource, resource, resource. I think we're ready for the next slide. How to register for your fall 24 classes. More steps. So you're adding the CRNs I referenced to the register ad or drop page. Right now, we're in like the ad mentality. While I'm thinking of it, um, and we'll talk about this at the end. There is an add and drop date deadline that we'll talk about later in the webinar. Um, you must select submit changes. Sometimes we have students that will add CRNs in these little boxes. You put your five digit CRN for one class, another class, the next class, and then you're gonna hit submit changes. Don't forget to hit submit changes because until you do that step, you are not registered. Sometimes errors will pop up in SIS while you're trying to register for classes. Um, you review the classes, there might be conflicts, you might not have a prerequisite requirement. Sometimes classes are going to be restricted by major, and if you're not that major, they won't let you register for that class. So for this error, it says there's a time conflict with another CRN number. So it tells you exactly what the problem is. If you feel stuck, when you have a conflict or with an error, you can always reach out to us in the hub. That's what we do. You have to review your courses by selecting view weekly schedule um, for the day or time grid. And this is all in the student menu. So you can register, hit submit, and then go back and check your work and make sure everything looks good. Next, please. So transfer credit process. This is something we've talked about in the transfer webinar and really in every single webinar we've done because it's such a hot topic. Um, we have students that always bring classes in. It might be through AP credit, might be through IB credit or Cram Cambridge A-level exams. For AP, you have to have earned a four or five on the AP exam. You request the scores sent to RPI and then they will be sent to RPI. AP, this is very timely because they're supposed to be released on Monday if you have already requested AP credit. IB credit for the higher level exams, we only accept the higher level exams. You have to earn a six or a seven, same process. You request the scores sent to RPI. Cambridge A level, you have to earn an A or a B, request the transcript, send to RPI. Um, there's a list of exams on the registrar's office website that's very helpful because it tells you how credits come in and what they get applied as. Some of them will come in as a named course in your curriculum. Some of them might be used um, as an elective. So you can check that out there on the registrar's website. Another good resource. More about the transfer credit process. Um, we didn't talk at all about dual enrollment yet. So if you passed a course, during the course of high school, you are taking courses at a college and you pass the course with a grade of C minus or better, that will transfer to RPI. Um, you have to complete the incoming freshman transfer credit procedure. There's a high school certification form and you do need to get signed off from your high school guidance counselor. So keep that in mind. You have to request the transcript and then it gets sent to RPI. Um, keep in mind, there's a little asterisk at the bottom. In order for a course to transfer in 
to credit for RPI, it can't count towards your overall high school graduation requirement credits. If you used that those credits to graduate from high school, then it won't transfer to RPI. Then there are your summer credit courses. Say you decide to take a summer course at a community college on your break from RPI. You will do the transfer credit approval form. Nothing is a given. You have to get every single course approved. Um, and you have to, again, have passed the course with a grade of C minus or better. And again, request the transcript and send it to RPI. So when should I have my credit transferred in by? Okay, so basically the deadline will be May 1st of your freshman year. By the end of your freshman year, if you plan on transferring in credit to RPI, that's the date. However, if you want to sit with us in the first year advisement hub and you know that you're transferring in credit for Calc 1 so you can move on to Calc 2, we need to have that conversation sooner than later. You can't wait for May 1st. So you really want to do it as soon as possible. Um, you should have requested credit al already, but if you didn't, it's okay. It's not too late. We just have to know that you are going to be transferring that credit in so we know which classes to help you get into. Important dates. So your time ticket was assigned back on June the 24th. We already talked a little bit about how to check your time ticket. Make sure that you pay attention to the time you're able to register so you can get the classes or have a better chance of getting the classes that you want. We right now are in the consultation period for academic advisement. And then freshman registration, we've said it a lot. The window for you guys to register before registration closes for a bit is July 10th through the 16th, but really you're going to register on July 10th. Make that your, your day to register. You don't wanna register after that. First day of classes at RPI is August the 28th, which is a Wednesday, I believe. And then you have an add deadline and a drop deadline, same exact date of September the 13th. So that's the deadline to add classes or to drop classes. And then welcome to you. We talked about the usage of the website um, for all things that are going to help you make your schedule, make your four year plan, pick your classes for four years over the course of your time here. But definitely be committed to that SOE hub website. You will use it all the time. And that's why we do frequent updates with that. We're also very active on YouTube. This video is going on YouTube, all our other hub emails are on YouTube and throughout the semester we'll email you and WebEx you and let you know that we're adding new videos or programs. Um, the SOE hub Instagram is really fun. It's at RPI underscore SOE hub. Um, we put factual information, reminders about the ad drop deadline, but there's also fun things too. So definitely check that out and follow us. You'll learn lots of things throughout the course of the year. With that being said, I think this is the point where I can turn it over to Karen. Karen's gonna show you some real-time applications of some of the processes we talked about today, especially in terms of registering for classes. Thank you, Jen. Thank um, you. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and kind of show you the preliminary stuff that Jen was covering is our website. Now, uh, we did email all of our communications to you, pointing you in the direction of our website, but if you don't have those emails, you can simply Google us. We're SOE Hub. Uh, we're the first thing that comes up. So if you click on here, this is bringing you to our real-time website. Now, there are two buttons here. We're still currently supporting our rising sophomores, which is the class of 27. So you're gonna focus on the class of 2028 link, which I'm gonna click now. All of our previous communications have been archived, so you can always read those. Um, we also encourage parents to check out this website because as you guys are navigating, building schedules and learning more about RPI, sometimes it's helpful to have your parents on board with that process if you're comfortable with it. So you can always point them to our website as well. Uh, as many of you have already utilized, we do have virtual drop-in advising appointments and our schedule is posted here. 
we might be extend, extending our hours for drop-ins. So just check back here regularly. And if you wanna drop in and meet with an advisor, the button to sign up is right here. Today is one of the days that we're actually hosting our advising webinars. So if you do wanna meet with an advisor later on at like one o'clock, you would just click to sign up. Now, in the event that you wanna sign up, the actual advising meetings have to be open. So just keep that in mind, because if you click on it during an off time, the form will not be activated. So these are the frequently asked questions. And when Jen kept talking about resources, this is what she's talking about. This page right here is super helpful to pretty much address any question that you might have academic related coming to RPI. And the big ones that we're focusing on right now is how do I create my schedule for next semester? So as an electrical or a computer and systems engineer, you're really gonna wanna focus on your major templates and you're also going to wanna focus on building your courses in Quacks, which are both things that I wanna show you how to access so after this webinar is over, you can start doing this yourself if you haven't begun so. So the big thing we're gonna click on is our class of 28 major templates, which brings us to a folder that has every major within the School of Engineering, including our dual that Jen mentioned previously. So if you're interested in being an electrical engineer, you just simply click. Here is the electrical engineering program. And ultimately, you're going to be focusing on fall of the first year. So if you don't have any AP, IB, Cambridge credits or dual enrollment credits, like Jen mentioned previously, you're pretty much gonna follow the template and register for these four courses in your first semester. Now, Computer Science 1, Introduction to ECSC Calculus, and then that Haas Humanities, Arts, and Social Science Inquiry class that Jen mentioned as well. Now, as far as Computer and Systems is concerned, it's under CSIS. You're gonna notice that pretty much everything is the same with the exception of incorporating engineering graphics and CAD or communications. Communications has the reputation of being a little bit easier. So a lot of students like to navigate in that direction, being a computer and systems engineer. So it's up to you which one you wanna choose. Um, a lot of students enjoy CAD. So if you wanna take the regular CAD, that's perfectly fine as well. But pretty much the same start out for both majors. Now, just touching on the dual as well, for students that are anticipating declaring the dual, you're pretty much gonna start out the same way that the electrical engineers do with those four courses. So, no stress, you can plan. You don't have to declare the dual if you're planning on pursuing it this semester. Obviously, you're not gonna lose ground by just doing this focus registration for the fall semester. Now, I'm gonna use this as an example to actually build a schedule on Quacks, just so you understand how to do that. And then I'll show you the other resources quick and we'll address questions. So Quacks main menu is here. Now, if you notice, let me gonna go back right here. Quacks link is also on our website. So I have it pulled up already, but if you click here, it's gonna bring you to the same thing. So the biggest things you wanna focus on just to ensure you're in the fall of 2024 semester, because if you're scheduling for an older semester, you're not gonna have the right courses. So up in the left-hand corner is your Quacks button, which brings you to the main menu. So if we go back to our major templates and we pull up our courses again, and I'm doing this repetitively because I want you to become very comfortable with the process. So these are your course numbers. These are what you're gonna be looking up when you're entering information into Quacks. So the first one for computer science one is CSCI 1100. So if we go back to Quacks, under science, we're gonna find CSCI. So if we click on that, 1100 is the first course on your list. There are multiple sections of computer science one. In order to maximize your options, you can click on toggle all sections. Now, if you're an athlete or you need to itemize specific times, say for example, you do not want a 4 p.m. course or a six or seven, 
These are things you can unhighlight accordingly. You can kind of pick and choose, but for this purpose, I'm going to keep everything highlighted. So the first course we have is Computer Science 1100. Click on Schedule, and that is going to bring you 22 different sections, and it's going to show you all of the meeting times for those sections. Now, going back to your template, you also have ECSC 1010. So I'm going to go back to my main menu in Quacks by hitting that orange button. Look for ECSC, which is right in the middle of your screen. 1010. There's only two sections, so I'm going to toggle both of them and hit schedule. So now we have two courses. Again, I'm going back to my template, math 1010. It's our calculus one. Back to Quacks main menu. Find your math. 1010. I'm going to toggle all sections just to show you how many options you have. Hit schedule. And now we have 832 options, which we can arrow through. Now, if you go back to the template, we have your INQR, Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. Go to Quacks, Main Menu, Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. Here is your INQR category. Now, just a note. All of Haas is currently listing their courses as full in the INQR catalog. Just so you know, we're adding seats to these this week. We restricted them because upperclassmen were registering. We don't want them to steal freshman seats. So we didn't populate them with seats yet. So all of these will have seats available on July 10th when you go to register. So just keep that in mind when you're building your course planner. These are not actually full at this time. So for this purpose, I am just going to pick one. I'm going to pick AI and the information age and click on it to throw it in to give us a full schedule. So now I have my full schedule. I actually really like this one because for me, I don't know about you, but sometimes 8 a.m.s are not super fun. So I'm going to actually take that one. But if you arrow through, you're going to see how things move around. And you might find your dream schedule here, depending on what your preferences are. And it's all personal. The little tiny stripe in between this section and this section is 10 minutes, just to give you a point of reference. Sometimes it's hard to see on the grid. But going through these, if you say, okay, this is the schedule that I want, then what you're going to focus on is the CRNs, aka course registration numbers, at the bottom of the screen. Now, the bottom of the screen, these are unique to each class that you're currently going to try to register for. So if you like all of these courses in the sequence that it offers, you're basically going to go back and you're going to view your class hour, how to register video, because that is actually going to show you how to input those CRNs. I'm not going to show it on this screen because it's a little complicated, but Jen showed you there's boxes that appear on the add drop menu during the time that your registration windows open. The CRNs actually will go right into those boxes. One, two, three, four, submit changes. Hope for the best that you get all of them without errors and you are done registering. So that is kind of the overview of everything, but going back here, this is really what you're going to want to focus on because this is going to show you all the information that you need. If you did have concerns about your AP and IB scores and how they transfer, all of us we put here as well. And Jen mentioned viewing the recording of this webinar, which you can absolutely do. You can scroll down. So right now we're right at the end of computer and systems and electrical as soon as this program is over this will be updated to be a hyperlink like the previous ones and you're more than welcome to view it again uh you can view any of our recordings uh we encourage you to and i think that's probably the bulk of what i would want to show you at this point but our soe hub bookmark it because it's super important to have that um, as a reference throughout the entire freshman year and even beyond. We keep this here archived for you going forward. Thanks, Karen. Lots of information, little amount of time. So to summarize, go to our website because you'll find everything there, even if you forget how to get into contact with us. Literally everything is there. We love our website in case you guys can't tell. 
So we are at the point where we can like start wrapping up and looking at questions and it looks like we only got two so far. Um, somebody had mentioned, are you allowed to transfer in pre calc college credit as a math elective? We don't transfer any pre calc into RPI. That's basically the simple answer. Anything I should add to that Karen? Well, I think the rule of thumb and. And um, it says, you know, I understand that the course is not actually offered at RPI. That is the key. If we can't match a transfer course with an equivalent here at RPI, it generally will not transfer in. Um, with the exceptions of like, you know, if you took a French class in high school and you want to transfer it in, RPI doesn't offer French, but we do accept languages under the language elective category. So that that would be a little bit of a different scenario. Um, whenever in doubt, though, to to the point of the person who posted in the chat, it's always really important to ask these questions because you don't know and we're here to help you. And rule of thumb, when in doubt, try to transfer it in because if it doesn't transfer no big deal but you might find that it transfers in as something that you didn't expect and we could advise you on how to apply that to your curriculum so when in doubt try it or ask us and we're happy to help so if anybody else has any questions you can drop those into the chat so we can address them um we are at the end of our webinar series. There's one more that's going to take place on Monday. So you can always go back and watch different things. The one on Monday is going to be more about registering for your classes at RPI. I think everybody, see, everybody absorbed all the information so they don't have any other colleges or questions, colleges. Thanks for coming, you guys. And now when we let you go, now it's all about getting off to 4th of the July. 4th of July celebrations, so it's a good jumping off point. Yeah, it doesn't look like any other questions. I'll hang out in case anything pops in and someone thinks of something off the top of your head. Karen, thank you so much for sharing that material. Um, go to the website, guys, and reach out to us. Uh, we're really excited for registration on the 10th. Um, and we, this is a good point to mention too, Karen brought this up. We have a couple more um, drop-in uh, webinar series that we're going to do. We're doing them today up until 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we have two more next week getting ready for registration on Wednesday. So we are happy to help in any way we can. And if you're not able to chat with us via WebEx, you can always drop emails into our email address. All right. I think everybody's happy for right now. You guys know how to find us. Thanks for taking the time today. Thanks. Oh, I saw something drop in. What time does class registration open on the 10th? It depends on your time ticket. So make sure to check what your registration time ticket is. And again, if you go into SIS um, on the student side, student resources, you'll click on check registration status and it'll tell you your exact time that you can start registering. It's gonna give you a range. You can register until July 16th. Ignore the end part, you want to know what your registration time is on July the 10th. So it'll depend. And if you need help with that, um, just shoot us an email. All right, happy 4th of July, you guys. Thanks for joining today. We'll see you very soon. Bye now.